18 says that if I hide iniquities in my heart, my prayers will be an abomination before God. Amen. It is important for us to know. You know, we are all sinners when we come to the presence of God. Amen. 66 verse 18. Amen. It is important that when we come to the house of the Lord, we know that we are all sinners in spite of, of how we are. In spite of, 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 of how we pray, in spite of our righteousness, the Bible says that even though our righteousness, they are like filthy rags before God. So we should understand that our righteousness is, is not something, it's not a reason why God has brought us to his presence. We God not call us to his presence because we are righteous. Amen. We are all sinners. And God called us to his presence. So we are in his presence because we are sinners. Jesus said, I did not come for the righteous. I came for the sinners. Amen. Amen. So we are all sinners in the house of the Lord. We are all clean in the house of the Lord. But when we come to the house of the Lord, we need to be clean. Hallelujah. When we go out, our thoughts, sometimes you might be, be like, oh, I did not, I'm not fornicated, I've not done anything. But your perception, your idea of, of maybe trying to sleep with somebody is the fornication in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, sin is something that separates us from God. When we, the root of Isaiah chapter 29. He said that surely the arms of the Lord is not too short to see. Now his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you My God. from your Lord. Amen. Amen. So he was talking about prayers. And he said that when we pray to God, it is not that God. It's far from our prayers. When we cry to God, it's not that God does not want to answer our prayers. Hallelujah. His hand is not too short to save us. He has the strength and the ability and the capacity to save us from whatever that we are going to do. And his ears are not too dull to hear our prayers. But it is what our iniquities. That has separated us from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So one thing that you should understand about prayer is that our your iniquities separates you from God. And that any time you come to the presence of God, you need to seek for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Even our righteousness are like filthy rag before the Lord. Whenever we come to the presence of God, there is a need for us to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We should identify that we are all sinners. Mm -hmm. yes. When we can come to prayer, we should know that we are sinners. It doesn't matter how you found our commitment to the things of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. Your commitment to the things of God is like two things. Right? Before God. Amen. Amen. That we should always admit that we are sinners. Amen. And I've always been saying this when it comes to prayer, do not ask for forgiveness speaking in tongues. Amen. You don't ask for forgiveness. The Bible says that if someone speaks in tongues, an unknown tongue, in the Holy Spirit that intercedes on his behalf. Amen. When you come to the presence of God, you should be always be conscious, aware of your sins and iniquities. And ask God to forgive you. 
One thing that is serious when it comes to prayers is that someone who comes to pray and is sinning by not accepting that what he's doing is a sin. Jesus. Amen. Amen. You don't even know that it's a sin for you to ask for forgiveness. You're not even accepting that what you are doing is a sin. But you think that you are doing a good thing. When you are praying comes, it's the spirit that is interceding for you. So if the spirit is interceding for you, the spirit can be interceding for you about your children. The spirit can be interceding for you about forgiveness. The spirit can be interceding for you on a lot of things. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit can be interceding for you in different avenues. Maybe a day that you might think that, oh, I, I prayed very well about, about my, 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 my job. And you were speaking in tongues. Maybe they're speaking. The Spirit was, was interceding for you about forgiveness. That the Lord should forgive you. Hallelujah. So, if you have come to pray, there is a need for you to identify that you are, you are sinned. Speak in the love way that you understand. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you don't know that whether you have your prayer, you will not know whether your prayers was being in this. Your prayers, well, the, the spirit took it, or, or in the tongue that you were speaking, the spirit of God was interpreting it as 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 protecting your children or, or your job or anything. Amen. But it is necessary that when we come to pray, we make sure that our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. It is necessary. It is very important. The next one about prayer, the next principle about prayer, the first one is that we should acknowledge that we are sinners. We are all sin. And that when we come to Him, we should ask for forgiveness. And we shouldn't ask for forgiveness in praying in tongues, but we should ask for forgiveness in, in, in speaking in a language that we understand it. We understand it. Hallelujah. The second one is forgiveness. Amen. There is one thing being forgiven, and there is one thing you forgiving. Amen. It is important that whenever we come to the house of the Lord, we ask God for forgiveness. In prayer. The same thing it is important that whenever we come to the house of the Lord, we let go of everybody that has sinned against us. We try as much as possible to do whatever that we can do within our means to forgive anybody that has sinned against us. It doesn't matter how painful the sin was, it doesn't matter how the person tried to play you foolish. It doesn't matter how it costs you what the person did against you. Hallelujah. There is a need for it to forgive. Amen. The book of Matthew chapter 18. Hallelujah. Verse 21 to 35. Tells us about the servants. That this servant owed his master. And when he got to the master, he fell on his feet and he began to beg of his, his, his servant. Please forgive me. I will pay this money. No matter how long it takes. I'm not trying to do him. I'm not trying to out, outsmart you. I'm going to pay this money. Hallelujah. But when he began to pray, or seek for forgiveness, the Bible says that the master said, I have forgiven you. And he went out from the presence of his master. And then he found another servant that was owing him. He was owing the master. And another servant was also owing him. Immediately, he saw the servant. He said, You, today, you think I'm a fool, eh? You think you can blame me, stop it. Whatever you do, I'm going to 
get my money today. Amen. Amen. You have been doing hide and seek with me for a long time. Today that I've seen you with my naked eyes, I will not let you go. Not until you pay me my money, you are going. Because I know that if I let you go, I will not find you again. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that he insisted, but the man did not have. But he gave everything that he could. Go. And at the point of time, he let them throw this man in jail. And people went and told his master. Then his master became furious. So the master said, I know I have no longer forgiven you. If I have forgiven you, the thousands, the millions, all the evil things that you did, the stupid things that you did, I have forgiven you. Millions of dollars. And somebody is offering you hundred dollars, and you cannot forgive that person, then you are not worth forgiving. I'm also claiming my money back. Hallelujah. Don't forget, prayer is an act of communication. Prayer is communicating with God. Hallelujah. This man went to his master and spoke with his master. But on behalf, or on his own behalf, that master, please forgive me. My hands. The same way we also come to God and we pray. And we ask God to forgive us our debts. Our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. But we are not willing to forgive others. Some of us think that people did against us thousand years, twenty years, fifty years, fifteen years. We still we still have it in our hearts. We are a big guy. That we, we judge every sin that people do to us. And whenever we go through it, we begin to feel like this person. We need to take revenge on this person. We begin to feel. But every time we come to the house of the Lord and we seek for forgiveness, but we are not willing to forgive. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when we come to the house of the Lord and, 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 and we have issues to present our offering to God, not to pray, but to give. And remember that we have issues with somebody. We should leave the offering there. Then go back and settle the issue with the person. Hallelujah. Before we come and give our sacrifice or our offering to God. So he's saying that he will not accept something from you if you are harboring something in your heart. How much more you are coming to him and asking something from him. Amen. So, when we pray and we have forgiveness, we, we don't have for, unforgiveness, it is very hard for the Lord to answer our prayers. That is one main basic principle that every believer should know. Hallelujah. And I know that everybody in this room knows that if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. But it's one thing that every believer knows. But it's one thing that is hard for every believer to do. Amen. Amen. It's not easy to forgive people that offends you. It is not easy to let go. Hallelujah. But if you are going to rely on God, God said I can do all things through Christ as God pays me. If you are going to seek after the face of God in prayer, amen, for God to strengthen you, so the first point that I mean is that we are sinners. When we come to the house of the Lord, we should, commit, we should admit that we are sinners. 
But God has given us the grace and the ability. And when we come before His presence, when we ask Him for forgiveness, He forgives us. But that does not mean that we should continue in sin. But we should always be persistent and, and willing to do what good. Hallelujah. And the second point is that in spite of what people do against us, we should be willing to forgive them. And it's hard to forgive. We cannot forgive by ourselves. We need God to grant us the grace, the strength, the power, and the ability to forgive others. Amen. Amen. The third thing is that we must have faith in prayer. Amen. We must acknowledge that when we come to the presence of God, we are sinners. And that we, should, we will humble ourselves for God to forgive us and not be proud in our prayers. We should also be willing to forgive in prayer. Hallelujah. The one thing that is made our fundamental principle that also makes our prayers effective is faith. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Amen. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. When you come, I want you to bring your Bible, your books, and your pen so that you write down everything that we learn. Hallelujah. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe me, ye shall receive. Amen. And all things, all things, whatsoever you shall ask, hallelujah, in prayer, believing you will do what we receive. So when we have faith in God, when we trust in God, hallelujah, the last time I told you that faith, has works. Faith is not dead. Faith is not when you are trying to cheat someone. When you are owing somebody, you have to pay it. You don't say that by faith. I pray that by faith. The, the person will, will, will forgive my debt. Hallelujah. If you have the means. Amen. Amen. And the capacity to pay it. It is not paid. If you are always somebody and you have the means and the capacity to pay it, and you are you are praying that you, you are saying that you have paid for God to forgive you, it's not paid. It's test. You are tested God. Hallelujah. Wow. Whenever God gives us provision wow. in life, wow. whenever God provides wisdom for us for certain, certain things, oh my God. the Bible says that God gets some people to come and some of them sit for years and some of them also lose what they have to work. Hallelujah. Amen. Inputs and believe that as we give, that is what we call faith. As you, you know, I'm following you and I'm paying you back your money, but I believe and I trust in God and God is willing to do what? Give me another money. Yes. But when you don't have the resources to pay and the capacity, that is when you go to God. And pray and trust God that God will grant you that resources and the capacity and the resources to pay. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God grants us the resources that 
again that we have gone about faith. Amen. Amen. In mind or in thoughts, we must put our faith in action. Yes. And putting your faith in action is using your resources to work. Mm. Hallelujah. Most believers, we do test God. We have the thing. And we hold on to it. We don't want to give. Amen. Amen. Faith. One day I will take time and break down what is faith to you. Yes. And you understand what is faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are sick and God has provided you a doctor. God has prescribed a medicine for you to get healed. You say, I won't take the medicine. I want God to heal me so that everyone will see that God has healed me. Jesus. Hallelujah. It's God that gave the wisdom. Yes. And God Himself said, I will should use hers to heal. That is his word. Amen. Amen. Faith does not go against the will of God. Whatever God has provided for you, you don't need to have. Like the other time I was sharing with you, we traveled about three, five hours. With our gas in E. And we pray to God that God take us there. And God took us there. But when we were coming, they blessed us. But people were like, oh, by faith, we will get there. If we were able to get here by faith, then we were expect money. And our harvest comes on the way. <laughs> God has already provided the money for us to fill our, 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 our time. Why are we saying it? That's still by faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God. You need to put your faith to work. When we pray to God. Amen. Amen. When we pray to God, we need to have faith. The Bible says that whatever that we believe in and we pray about it, when we pray, the Lord will answer us. Amen. James chapter 1 verse 5 to 8 Say that when we doubt the word of God, when we do not have faith in the word of God, we should not even expect that we will receive anything from the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when we are doubting God, we shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. If we do not have faith in God, we shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Faith is not taking advantage of people and saying that by faith, God will do it. As you, the person that you are taking advantage of, you, you know the kind of prayer that he is also praying. <laughs> Amen. We don't take advantage of people and say it is faith. You know, Jesus could have said, oh yeah, I have faith. I will jump. And the angels have faith in God that when I jump, angels will come and then uphold me. Hallelujah. I know that when somebody shoots me, God will protect me that they can bullet to not make bullets. Mistaking. But if I go and stand there, hey, shoot me, God said, if God said that you protect me, shoot me and see. You will die before your time. Hallelujah. Amen. You will die before you, you are tested God. But if you know that when I'm going, some of you, sometimes God will speak, really speak to you before you go, but you disobey and go, then you will die. If you follow 
the voice of God. They mean if they shoot you, you will not die. Yes. Even if you die, you will come back to life. Jesus okay. said that. Didn't I tell you that? If you have faith in me, even if you are dead, you will resurrect. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you have faith, you will resurrect. And most of the things that happen in West like that has already been given to us power to just declare, make a decree. That's why I'm telling you, if God has already given you the resources, you will never step in. God always fights on behalf of the vulnerable. Amen. If you are innocent, if you have the capacity of where you cannot do anything, that is when God steps in and fights on your behalf. Amen. So God has given you power. That the struggles that you are going through sometimes you have been praying, God, God, deliver me from this problem, deliver me from this problem. But when we go, the, the, the words that we, 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 we speak. Hallelujah. Like last two weeks, I was telling you, somebody said something. He was like, oh, I there are certain truths you don't have to declare it. When it comes to prayer. Yes, even though what you are saying is true, but you are putting something into the atmosphere that the devil can use against you. He is the accuser of the brethren. God has given us power. And that when we are praying about certain issues and they, they are becoming harder, we need to stand and declare that this is not our portion. Hallelujah. We need to start and make the positive declarations into our lives. And when we declare, the Bible says that, and we shall make a decree, and it shall be established. Amen. We cry a lot. We, 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 the Bible says that we, we should not be thinking about what, you know, we can't be here, we pray and seek for the grace of God, about the, for the Lord to come and establish our marriage, for the Lord to establish our job, for the Lord to establish our finances, for the Lord to establish us in many other ways. But we go and we look at the situation and the environment and we are doubting how can these things be and we are thinking about it. God has given us power to declare Hallelujah. Positive things. The Bible says that life and death is in our tongue. And if we love it, we shall eat the fruits thereof. So if you love life and you speak life, you shall eat the fruit of life. Yeah. If you love death and you speak death yeah. into your situations, that is the fruits that you shall eat. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to have faith in the things of God. Yes. He said, I've given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall my enemy shall you. He said, I have given you power to silence your enemies. He said, I have given you power that whatsoever thing that you shall agree on this earth, it shall be agreed in heaven. In other words, whatsoever thing that you shall find on this earth, it shall be bind in heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we have the power to control certain things in life. But instead of us speaking in faith, that God has said it, we speak, how can it be? We can't make it. Hallelujah. My husband is not good. My wife is not good. Hallelujah. Most of you, when you have issues with your wives, your husbands, as soon as your wife turns around, or your husband turns around, around, a witch. <laughs> you call your, your, your wife witch. <laughs> yes. The, 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 the witch is more to possess him. You have accepted that he is. You are. Amen. 
Even if your, your child is, is a stubborn child, don't call him a stubborn child. You can advise him. I don't put that thing on him. What you speak? You, need, you know you need to have faith in God. Whenever you are speaking it out, you are speaking it out that the Lord will deliver him from it. His stubbornness. But you are not speaking it out to a friend on his life that he is an addict. He is addicted to drugs. He is perverse. No. Yes, it is true. You know, there are some truths that are not meant to be said. The moment you speak it out, the devil will also hold it against you. Or oh, even his mom admits that he is an addict. Even his mom is saying that he's an addict. He, will take, he said that he's the accuser of the brethren. So we should have faith in him and declare positive things. Amen. But in declaring positive things, we should know when to declare positive things and when to act positive. Sometimes we need to act, not just declare. Jesus. Don't be confused. We declare positive things and act positive. If you're always sitting down and declare, oh, the Bible says that we shall be the head but not the tail. My father is the richest because all riches and all wealth, silver and gold, belong to the Lord. I am going to be the richest person in the world. And you don't know that. That is not faith. It's because it is not in line with the word of God. The Bible says that do not love sleep to be what? Poor. You are poor. You, you sleep 12 hours a day and you are expecting to be rich. If you are a student, you need to study. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't expect that you confess it. Oh, if you confess it, you need to. Because faith has works. So you should know when to confess and when to get back on it. If you confess that you are going to be the head in your classroom, you should stay. You know, it's not everybody that studies that God grants him the ability to be the head. But because you are a believer and confess it, the more you study, the more grants you the grace and the ability to become the head. We should know when to declare positive things. And when to act positively. Amen. Amen. You are praying. I pray that the Lord will increase my business. The Lord will increase my church. And you are not doing evangelism. How will the Lord increase your church? Hallelujah. You are praying. Some of you find it hard to bring people in church. Tell people to come to church. At your own workplace, you have never invited somebody to church. But you are always complaining about the church. How small the church is. Hallelujah. You are praying that the Lord should grant you financial resources. The Bible says that do not last me to be great, to be poor. Go away. Hallelujah. The Bible encourages us to work hard. So if you sit down and take a portion of the Bible and, and confess positively that I'm going to be rich and you are not working, forget it. Hallelujah. Why is it that I'm not be able to progress in my business? What investment are you making in your business? Faith is not just developing or positive declarations. You need to declare positive declarations in your life. On your children. Even when the situation is negative. Don't speak to affirm it. Speak to You know, when people, somebody is saying, he says, I hope my faith I'm not saying. No, that is not faith. Amen. 
a deception. First of all, faith comes when we are weak. Paul said, I'm weak, you when I am weak, I am strong. Hallelujah. You should accept your weakness, even though I'm having a headache. But I believe in God that God is here, has healed me, or God is healing me. What is that? Uh, oh, my face, my head is, is gone. And my, I'm not sick. No. I am sick. You have acknowledged that you are human. You are capable of becoming sick. And your faith is God will heal you. But you don't ignore the sickness and sit down and say that by faith I am healed. You sit down and then by the time you realize you, you are at the um, emergency unit. Hallelujah. We need to have faith in God. We are talking about principles of prayer. And basic principles, basic things that we should know about prayer. Amen. As we are fasting and we are praying, you can pray all kinds of prayer, you can fast for all kinds of fasting. If you don't have faith in God, your fasting will be in vain. Amen. So faith have words. Faith have words. Yes. Faith is not just a positive declaration. Mm-hmm. Positive declaration with action that goes in line with the will of God. That is faith. Hallelujah. You cannot be praying that God give me a husband. I'm believing God for a husband and be sleeping with somebody, somebody's husband. I have faith that God is going to bring my husband. Amen. God will not bring you any husband. Amen. You have already told you one for yourself.
you should understand this basic principles when it comes to prayer. As we will pray and pray and pray, there will be no answer. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. He said that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So belief comes of hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Amen. The other scriptures, the other verses is that but so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. Amen. Faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. Some of us we don't even know that the Bible says that we should not last week to be poor. Hallelujah. How you know I remember my first time I came to the US and my friend was one of my friends asked me to drive. We went and picked some tent, so we went with his car. And then uh, we hired a U-Haul. So when we were coming, we had two cars, so I had to drive the U-Haul. I didn't know that the other leg that is marked with diamond. And it, it stays half the way they call it. But in Connecticut, it has diamond. The diamond link. I didn't know that if you are not two people, you can't write that link. You need to be a family or two people before you can write in that link. Hallelujah. So I was riding in that lane and enjoying the ride. And my friend called, called me on the phone and said, Hey, you better get out of, out of that lane. Because I did not know. I was enjoying it. The ride. I said, This lane, <laughs> there is no power in it, so I can go. My, 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 my own speed. Hallelujah. Can we go up to the speed limit? Let me go to this thing. The same way if we don't know the word of God. We say that faith is conversion positive and then acting according to the word of God. So if we don't know the word of God, how can we act according to the will of God for even God to answer our prayers? Amen. Some of us will not know that the Bible says that if we treat our husbands and wives in an inconsiderate behavior, the Lord will not answer our prayers. Some of you, this is the first time you heard it was the time that I was preaching there. We need one answer prayer. We don't even know it is in the Bible. That if you mistreat our, your wife, that if you don't submit to your, your husband, your prayers will be handed, uh, will, will be hindered. So your prayers are being hindered. Amen. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. We need to have faith in the things of God. But before we can have faith in God, we need to be, 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 be close to the word of God. We need to be studying the word of God. How long do we study the word of God? Amen. If our prayers will be effective, we need to know the word of God. Amen. An effective lawyer that we always face his case is one that knows the law. The devil is our accuser. The devil is like a prosecutor. 
He will always go before God and based on the word of God, accuse him. Hallelujah. You know when, when the devil came to Jesus, he did not quote from the book of Mammon. He did not quote from his. He quotes the scriptures. Hallelujah. He quoted the scriptures. That the, the Bible says, that the, the scripture says that when you are fallen, you cause his angels to come and take charge of you. Amen. And Jesus also said that it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. But everything and proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the devil, when, when God called his, 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 his angels, some of his angels, the devil showed forth. And he said that, do you think that your servant Job is righteous? It's because you have endowed him with blessings. If you like, let, let me test him. Hallelujah. And see whether he trusts in you. So he always picks something up that's in line with the word of God. Then he will come and fight you. So if you be able to overcome him, you need to know the word of God. You need to understand the word of God. You need to have an intuition. You know, we read the Bible. Some people say, oh, after I read the Bible. But we don't understand. That is why so called men of God, faith men of God, they are two pinners. All in the name of the Bible. In the name of the word of God. They will turn the word of God to us. And we feel like that is the right thing. Because we ourselves, we don't study the Bible. And we'll be like, oh, we've been there in the presence of God for a while, but we are not receiving answers. Then we, we get discouraged. But what that person is even leading you to is not even of God. And because you don't study the Bible for yourself and pray for God to give you an intuition and understanding. These days, we don't seek for the word of God. We seek for Him. We seek for miracles. But the greatest miracle, the greatest weapon to produce miracle is the word of God. Amen. You don't have to be wandering around who will speak into my life what is going to happen. You don't have to be wandering around who will help me, who will perform the miracle in my life. If you know the word of God, if you have the word of God in you, you have access to perform every miracle. Amen. I said that if you have the word of God in you and you understand the word of God and you move according to the word of God, you have access to perform any miracle. Jesus said that if you believe in me, the things that I will do, you will do greater things than that. Hallelujah. If you abide in me and I abide in you, whatsoever thing that you shall ask in my name, Shall be done for you. Yes. He is the word of God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. My God. So if we have faith in God, mm -hmm. if yeah. we, we 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 study the word of God, mm -hmm. not because Pastor will ask us, did you read your Bible? Did you have you read your Bible today? Did you do your Bible? And that is why you read the Bible. But you shed it for understanding through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. You know the scriptures was written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And for you to have vivid understanding 
in the scriptures. It takes the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot understand the Bible in plain English like you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Read textbooks and then um, other literatures. And you understand because it is plain English. Yes. The Bible is plain English. Now we even have um, 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 the BBE, the, the basic English version. But even if you read the basic English and you don't have the Spirit in you, and the Spirit Himself does not give you understanding like a joker in your inner, you will never understand the Word of God. Faith coming by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You should rely on God, God the Holy Spirit, that He is the only source. For understanding the word of God. Hallelujah. So if we want faith, as the disciples pray the Lord, increase our faith. Then we should study the word of God and rely on the Holy Spirit for understanding. Not your pastor, not your friend, not your grandmother, not your your prophet. Hallelujah. Some of us, we have made certain before our God. Yes. When we speak, it is final in our lives. Amen. Amen. When our so-called prophets speak, it is final. Nobody has got nothing to say to us. <laughs> we don't even give a second thought. What this prophet is saying, I'm not saying this prophet is not from God, but what he is saying, is it does it go in well with the word of God? What the, the word, what is the word of God saying? Amen. Amen. Don't forget the prophet was asked not to eat. And another prophet, the Bible did not say that he's not a prophet of God, but the Bible admits that he is a prophet. Came and said that go and eat. Once the word of God has already come to him, that don't eat. Another prophet. He did not take time to find out that is this. The voice of God. And he went and heads. Nobody knows why that prophet did that. Came and said that God says that he should go and eat. Nobody knows why. Whether he is a good prophet or a bad prophet, nobody knows. But the Bible acknowledges him as a prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Bible speaks about false prophets, he, he talks. He says false prophets. Amen. Amen. So it's not a matter whether that prophet is from God or he's not from God. But is it according what he is saying? Is it according to the word of God? Is it according to God's mind? Is it according to the word of God? Amen. Amen. We need to get it. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit, not the prophets, not the, the apostles, not uh, not on the fivefold ministry. Hallelujah. But solely on the spirit of God. Amen. Even though sometimes God, through his prophets, apostles, evangelists, and, and, and the fivefold ministry, bring forth his word. But we still need to confirm with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. We still need to check it out for ourselves. Sometimes it's not, that God, it's not like God has not spoken to them. God has really spoken to them. They are really speaking the, uh, the mind of God. But they are misrepresenting mis 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 the mind of God. Amen. Amen. It's not like God did not tell Moses to stress his, 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 his word. God told him to do something and when he do it, water will come out. But he did it not the way God asked him to do it. He did it on his own way. Even though he did what God has asked him, God says, stretch it, he hit it. Hallelujah. Sometimes, as 
men of God, we also have er errors. We also make mistakes in, in giving the sermon. Amen. You need to stay in the way for yourself and rely on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I can even give you a scripture. But in my mind, I'm saying maybe Matthew 25. But I'm speaking out maybe Matthew chapter 8. But when you go and check for yourself, you know that, hey, last week the message that Pastor gave, it was a wrong um, scripture that he gave us. Study the word for your book yourself. Study to show yourself approved and a workman that needs not to be what I say. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And if we have and if we trust in the word of God, if we put our trust and our faith in the word of God, God will never let us down. Stand on your feet and let's end here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Next week we are going to look at the other reasons why the other principles of prayer. Amen. Principles of prayer. We need to understand these principles, how it works. If we don't understand them, it will be hard for us to be able to pray and have an effective answer. Amen. Amen. We thank God today. Let me pray with you. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, you have let us know that when we come to your presence, we are sinners and we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But through your grace and your mercies, you sanctify us and bring us close to you and call us your children and saints. We pray that Lord will grant us the grace and the ability to dwell in your presence. The grace, the unforgiving grace, and grant us also the grace to forgive others and forgive us also. You said that when we pray, we should pray. The Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. We pray that Lord you forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And God has faith as we study your way. Even now that we are in the church studying the word of God, God has wisdom, insight, and intuition and help us to grow in our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together.